Welcome to this lecture on capital gains tax. So let's jump right into it. What is capital gains tax? CGT is an income tax on capital. Sounds a bit strange, but it forms part of the Income Tax Act. It is included in one of the schedules. The schedule is called the 8th schedule. So at the back of the Income Tax Act, we've got a number of schedules. These are basic amendments and addendums and different types of taxes or processes which relates to the Income Tax Act, but which does not form part of the Income Tax Act itself. Now, before I just move on, quickly, when you are referring to any of the sections, if you want to call it that, in the 8th schedule, or in any of the schedules, schedule 1, 2, 3, we call that paragraphs, and we do not call it sections. So instead of section 1, section 2, it's paragraph 1, paragraph 2, etc. Okay, very important for you to also just be accurate when you are making any comment and reference to the H schedule in your test and exams to make sure that you refer to it as a paragraph. Now, capital gains tax, basically the idea behind capital gains tax is that if there has been an increase in the value of your assets, you need to be taxed on it. Now, that increase in the value of your assets, so let's say you bought an asset for uh, 100,000 rands, and the value today is 300,000 rands. Now that 200,000 rands increase, that potentially needs to be taxed. Now, if you sell this asset for 300,000 rands, that is what we call a realized capital gain. So there's an actual sale taking place. You're making actual money and actual, you've, re you've received actual 200,000 rands in value. So it's taxed. But you'll also encounter and especially at the CTA level, and this is some of the more complex areas, that we get unrealized capital gains. So those will be situations where um, the value is increased to 300,000 rands. You don't actually sell the asset, but you get taxed on that 200,000 rands increase in value in any case. Capital gains tax was introduced on the 1st of October 2001. Very, very important, guys. That is called the valuation date. You have to... Pay attention to that term. If you read it, valuation date, valuation date value, anything with valuation date, it's referring to the 1st of October 2001. Then, just obviously, simple comment, capital versus revenue, which you would study under gross income, where we decide if you sell an asset, so you sell your house, is that gross income or is it capital in nature? Now, basically, you have to understand that discussion from gross income. When is it capital? When is it not? In order to do CGT. So you need to be able to understand that if a, not, uh, a person sells his personal motor vehicle, that is probably not going to be gross income. Because if he's not involved in a motor dealership, for example, and it's probably going to be subject to capital gains tax. And you'll see, I've used this deliberately here, the word here, possible CGT. I'm not saying... The moment something is now capital nature, there is CGT, there's possibly CGT, a, a big chance, but it's not a guarantee. Now, when we are looking at capital gains tax, with this slide over here, I am going to at the same time discuss just how you are going to lay out your questions. So we know we've got our headings, description, calculation, slash explanation. I want you to now see you're going to add a column called CGT. And your rands column is still your rands column where you include everything that goes into gross income or included in your taxable income calculation. Now, every single time we sell an asset, we calculate a capital gain or a capital loss. Capital gain is proceeds less base cost. Okay, so now we sell asset one. Proceeds. base cost and that gives us a capital gain and make sure you see it goes into my CDT column we sell asset to proceeds sorry for the shorthand guys obviously an exam you can't but just to save for a little bit of time if your base cost is greater than your proceeds, you'll have a capital loss. So if you sell it for 100 rands, but base cost is 120, you'll have a 20 rands capital loss, right? So also goes into our CDT. 
And we'll continue doing this for every single asset that we sell. Now, right now, I want you to just pay attention and see. We will do these calculations each time. We don't add up all of the proceeds for asset 1, 2, 3, and 4, and all of the base costs for asset 1, 2, 3, 4. No. You have to do each one of them separately. Okay. Now, that's what we're doing here. Now, that is what is called a capital gain. Proceeds less base cost. You do this each asset for each asset that you sell. But the amount that gets included in our income tax calculation, in other words, the amount that gets included in our rents column over here, is called the taxable capital gain. Now, very important thing, guys, especially if you are not a person that pays a lot of attention to language, and reading and so forth. Pay attention to this because this is a mistake a lot of students make. If they ask you the question to do the capital gain or calculate or comment on the capital gain, they're referring to the capital gain. If they're referring to the taxable capital gain, they're referring to this whole big calculation. Now, this taxable capital gain works as follows. For each of the capital gains you've calculated, you will put that into the calculation. Now, in our way we've done it here, it basically means when we get to the position we have to do CGT, and this is right at the end of our tax calculation, it's basically for before, for now, the donations deduction. Right, you add up everything in your CGT column. Now, what I want you to just see, you add up everything, we're following this process now. So this is now, we've added up these two amounts. Then, if you are a natural person, you get an annual exclusion of 40,000 rands. If you are not a natural person, like a company, guys, you get nothing here. Right. Now, please note the word there. It is exclusion, not deduction. It means it excludes 40,000 rands of value. So let me explain. If you add up everything here and you've got 100,000 rands, it means after deducting the annual exclusion, the amount that we calculate here is called the aggregate capital gain and guys you have to know those terms because you will see the paragraphs in the act refer to them specifically so please be aware of that right so the aggregate capital gain is then 60,000 now why am I saying it's an exclusion understand the following if we add up everything there and it is a hundred thousand rands loss, this aggregate capital gain here does not become a hundred and forty thousand. That's not what happens. It says forty thousand rands of that hundred thousand rands is excluded. So it means it makes it sixty thousand. To understand what it does, it excludes value, it's not a deduction. Alright, so that's an aggregate capital gain or an aggregate capital loss. From that, we will deduct any capital losses bought forward from the previous year. Now, what are these capital losses? These amounts I've got on screen now follow through. So let's even say there was no, no amount from this year, um, no capital loss. That means we're sitting here in this position, and this is called your net capital gain or loss. We're sitting here in a negative position. That 60,000 rands will not be deducted in my rands column. Okay, that 60,000 rands over there will be carried forward to the next year. And in next year's calculation, it will be included as a deduction. So it will decrease it in the next year your capital gains. Right, so that's just a very quick walkthrough there. I'm just going to for now just use a positive amount here. Right, so let's say there was a capital loss last year, I'm just going to say bought forward of 10,000 rands. So that gives us a net capital gain of 50,000 rands. Now, we're sitting over here. If you're a natural person, 40% of that amount gets included. And if you're not a natural person like a company, 80% of the amount gets included. So I've just been using a natural person here. Call this the inclusion rate. 
forty percent, and that twenty thousand over there is called the taxable capital gain. And exactly what it means, it means the capital gain, which is taxable. So that means that goes into my twenty thousand rands rents column. Okay, so guys, where do we include this? Basically, from now, right before your the nation's deduction and the nation's deduction is the last deduction so this is basically right at the end now just one quick note here this inclusion or exclusion rate this 40,000 rands there becomes 300,000 rands in the year when a person dies why because in the year when you die you will be treated as if you sold all of your assets at market value that's a deemed disposal, even if you haven't. So that's a deemed disposal. So because there's more capital gain, they give you a greater annual exclusion.